Hello, everybody. Welcome to the eighth episode of Celeb Works Live, chosen from among all others by the immortal elders Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Achilles, Mercury, Billy Batson, and his mentor travel the highways and byways of the land on a never ending mission to right wrongs, to develop understanding, and to seek justice for all. In time of dire need, young Billy has been granted the power by the mortals to summon awesome forces of the utterance of a single word, Shazam, a word which transformed him in a flash into the mightiest of mortal beings, Captain Marvel. I'm Chris Arsaga. I'm Nero Lemus. Thanks for joining us. Before we bring on our special guest, we want to remind you that you can be automatically entered to win an hey, autograph Dave. 8 by 10 Come here. from Michael and John Davey. It might take some time to get it, but we will get it to the winner. All you have to do is share this live stream, and we will contact the winner after the show. And this is what it looks like. It's very nice. Sorry, there's a little glare there. Let's see if I can get it. Very nice picture. There we go. Nuri? I'm excited to bring on this superhero to the program, but before I bring him on, let's introduce him. He's an iconic former teen idol that was pictured in all of the Tiger Beat and Teen Beat magazines. When Shazam came calling, Michael Gray was back on TV for his second series. It was an instant hit because of the young audience that watched on Saturday morning TV. During the run of the show, Michael was on the road every weekend making personal appearances across the country. It was a total surprise when he was told that Warner Brothers had bought the rights to the Shazam series and were going to put it out on DVD. It was a big hit, and now Shazam has had a rebirth. Michael has appeared in an episode of Comic Book Men in the fall of 2017, which, of course, has created a new, younger fan base. He has made guest appearances on the FX show, or FXX show, Archer, and has recently, uh, recently been asked to do an episode of DC Daily and DC Universe is now streaming the old Shazam series in HD. He doesn't need much of an introduction, but we want to please welcome our friend inside and outside the business. Please welcome Michael Gray to the program. Yay. Hey, hey Michael. Michael. Hey, guys. Hey, look at us. It's the Batson <laughs> we're Brothers. All, we're all here. We got, <laughs> we got our shirts on. It's I the Batson Nuri Brothers. <laughs> Billy Batson, Chris Batson, and Neri Batson. That's right. I love it. Neri, you should change it on there. <laughs> uh, change it? Yeah, no, I'll leave it. That's funny. Well, Thanks for joining us, Michael. Uh, it looks like you just poofed on the screen there. Hope you're okay <laughs> with taking some questions. Also to the general public, if you have any questions for Michael Gray or for us, please post them on the official stream and we will answer them if we can. Perfect. Now we're gonna get started, Michael. Before you made your way to Hollywood, you were born in Chicago and lived in Florida as a young boy. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, growing up in Miami Beach, Florida was fantastic. It was like living on a tropical island. Palm trees, going to the beach on weekends, going on in boats all the time, fishing. It was a great place to grow up. Plus, back then in the 60s, it was very safe. It was a wonderful, wonderful time to grow up, and I enjoyed Florida a lot. What kind of hobbies did you have growing up? Was it, I mean, I, I, you were really young when you were living in Florida. I'm sure, I mean, other than the beach, what, would you, what did you like doing? Well, I played a lot of like tetherball and volleyball and badminton we had around our house. I also had little jobs too. I delivered newspapers when I was a kid, you know, so I'd sit on my, you know, my butt outside in the front of the house and wrap newspaper and rubber bands, put them on the back of my bike and throw them at people's houses, you know, in their front doors. You know, it was a lot of fun. Real teen beat activities. I love it. Yeah, love exactly. It. Yeah. So Michael, how did you, how did you start in the business? Well, it's just, actually, it's a pretty interesting story. Uh, I was about 15 years old, and living in Miami Beach, they were shooting two shows down there at the time. One was called Flipper, and the other was called Gentle Ben. So there were casting directors working down there and a couple of theatrical agents. So somehow a theatrical agent saw me somewhere, asked somebody who I was, found out, and contacted my parents and wanted to know if I wanted to be an actor. Oh, wow. I don't I don't know how this all happened. It was very bizarre, really. So <laughs> my father said, let me talk to him and see. She called my father. She got his phone number. My father asked me if I want to be an actor. I said, no, I really don't want I have no interest in it at all. So I thought about it for a while. And I talked to the drama teacher at my junior high school. And he said, probably a good idea. You have a good quality about you. Your voice is good. You have an interesting look. Probably a good idea. And he said, the best thing to do 
is do some community theater. And when you get out of high school, go to two schools to learn the business. One is the American Academy in New York, and the other is Pasadena Playhouse in Pasadena, California. Yeah. So I auditioned for two, uh, two theaters, two shows, actually. They were actually both starting the same day in Miami Beach. One was a matinee, one was an evening show. So I worked on two shows at the same time, got it all right. I loved it a lot, so I want to do this. So when I got out of Pasadena, when I got out of high school, I picked Pasadena Playhouse. I auditioned for both, actually. And I picked Pasadena because I wanted to be in television and motion pictures, and New York is all about theater. So I went out to Pasadena Playhouse, and I studied there for three years. And when I graduated, right before I graduated, I was doing a main stage play with Leanne Ames, Lorene Tuttle, and Ben Murphy called Life with Father. And an agent saw me in the play, came down and knocked on my dressing room door after the show and said, you want to be an actor? Are you serious about this? If so, I'd like to sign you. So I signed with her, got a photo session from 8 by 10s and everything she sent me out on, I got. I was very, very lucky, and that's how I got started wow. in the business. What was your first gig as an actor, officially, in, in California? Well, my first gig actually was Room 222, the pilot. That's not what got my career off the ground, but Room 222 was my pilot. First time I did it, and I thought this business is easy. I got out of acting school, and already I'm doing a pilot for a TV series. Well, I did the pilot. I signed a contract with 20th Century Fox. Three days later, I got a call from my agent saying, you're not in the series, it didn't work. And I said, what happened? They said, we're not sure. We heard two different versions. One, we heard you didn't really fit the image of the character. And the other one we heard was nepotism. Somebody else's son wanted the part. It was a friend of the producer. Oh. And he got the part. So I'm not sure what really happened, but that's what I heard. But what really got my career going was a movie that we got did called Run, Simon, Run with Burt Reynolds. I played his brother. And kids saw the movie, started writing to Tiger Beat magazine. So Tiger Beat called me in and said, we want to talk to you about running some pictures of you and articles because kids were interested in who you are. So they took a bunch of photos and ran a postage stamp size photo of me in a small article. Kids liked it, started reading more and more, more articles, more pictures. That was pretty much the start of my career. I signed with a management deal with the owner of Tiger Beat. And that's how my career started, really, with your Tiger Beat magazine. Incredible. It's amazing. So you landed the role of Ronnie on NBC series, The Little People. Uh, it was reworked for season two and your character was cut. How did you handle that? That was another interesting story. I thought, okay, cool. I, I got a call from, uh, my agent got a call from Warner Brothers for me to come out and audition for uh, Ronnie and The Little People. So I did. I went to the casting director, the directors, the producers, I auditioned for everybody. And right in the middle of it, they said, we have one more person you have to audition with, and that's Brian Keith. So Brian walked in, I'm reading my lines, and all of a sudden Brian said, Continental Airlines. I said, excuse me, what did that mean? And he got up and walked out. So the producer said, nah, sorry, you don't have the part. It's not going to work. Wow. So I didn't know what happens. So I, okay, I walked out. Three days later, I got a phone call from my agent and said, pack your bags, you're going to Hawaii to shoot the little people. What had happened was Brian owned a percentage of the show. Talk about nepotism again. Wow. He didn't want me in the show. He wanted one of his relatives to play the part. <laughs> so they started shooting the pilot. It was already sold. It was a sold pilot. It was a sold series. So they started shooting the pilot. The kid couldn't act. Oh, so they no. flew me to Hawaii. I shot 26 episodes. And one day, wow. he had brought a magazine on the set. It was a Tiger Beat magazine. And the entire front cover had picture of me, and it said, Michael Gray, star of the little people. Well, I was not the star of the little people. It was Brian Keith. Yeah. So we finished shooting the show, all 26 episodes. I flew back to California. I was in a restaurant one night having dinner, and my manager happened to be there and saw me and walked up to me and said, I got to talk to you. Something happened. I said, what? You're not doing season two. I said, what do you mean? He said, they wrote you out of the show. You're not doing season two. And I Why? It was he said, renamed or retitled The Brian Keith Show. They renamed The Brian Keith Show. And they let oh, me go, <laughs> and two other kids on the show, and they also let Gary Marshall go. How do you let Gary Marshall go, the uh, best director crazy. in the world? Wow. wow. So Gary was executive producer and director. They let him go, too. So at that point, I was unemployed. Wow. <laughs> and, and from that point on, I mean, 
I know that there's a little bit of a, you know, what am I going to do next? Especially you're a young actor. How did you get the role of Billy Batson in Shazam? Because that's, I mean, yeah. iconic. Well, what happened, there was a little bit of time frame between the time I was off Little People, the Brady Bunch people called, said, we come out and play Marsha's boyfriend. I said, sure. I did that. It was a lot of fun. And then one day, again, it was about maybe three, four weeks later, my agent got a call from Filmation saying, we want to talk to Michael Gray about playing Billy Batson. So they sent me out to Filmation Studios. I walked in. Les Tremaine was sitting in the office. I thought, this is cool. Wow. So they said, would you consider playing Billy Batson on a Saturday morning TV show? I said, of course. I'm an actor. I want to work. So I didn't even audition. So wow. Was, I got cast. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. It's it was like cool. A yeah. Dream of wonderful little things that have that just happened. I mean, just a, a blessing. It's really cool. Yeah. It's it's funny because uh, I mean, we were talking about this before we started, and you probably have figured it out. I'm a huge Captain Marvel fan. I mean, I love Shazam. I mean, I know everything about the character. I I used to collect the comics, all that stuff. You tell by the shirts, Craig. <laughs> yeah. I <know. laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I have a I have a long winded question. And there's a bunch of different little facets to it. So when you were cast on the series, uh, what was your inspiration for Billy? And did you read the comics or had you read any of the comic books before you were cast? And did you know who Captain Marvel or Billy was before you were even cast on the show? Actually, no. I grew up as a Superman fan, George Reeves, and Batman. So when yeah. I was cast as Billy, I started doing studying, basically. I started checking the internet out. I was looking for comics. I found some stuff. So I said I had to create what I thought was the right character to play for Billy. So it was something I wasn't familiar with, but uh, I learned it quickly. I'm a good, I'm a good study, and I became Billy Batson. That's so awesome. Followed all the directors and all the writers. That is so cool. Uh, with working with Lou Scheimer, how was he? I mean, he's an iconic figure of the series. I, I assume that when you were uh, – you know, not auditioning for the series, but when you were picked, I assume he had an integral part of that. Lou is a good guy. There was two producers, Lou Scheimer and Norm Prescott. Lou was much friendlier, so I became friends with Lou. Went to his house a couple of times for dinner. He was a very, very nice guy. Um, he gave me some good, in, good input about what to do with the character, so I, I liked working with Lou. The last time I actually saw Lou, I was down at San Diego Comic Con in 2012 with Warner Brothers. I was down there promoting, um, they, were, they just bought the rights to Shazam in 2012 and put it on DVD. So I went down there with them. And after the panel, they told me Lou Scheimer's out there sitting at a table. Why don't you go up and surprise him? So I did. I walked up. Lou was sitting there. Wow. He wasn't in good shape. He was in a wheelchair, poor guy. He was not in good shape at all. But he looked at me and stared at me for a second and went, oh, my gosh, you were the kid. You were Billy. I hadn't seen Lou in, like, you know. 35 years at that point. So it was really great to see him again. That's so cool. Yeah, it was fun. Wow. Yeah, and I, know, I, I guess ever, for everybody out there might not know that Lou uh, actually did the voice for all the elders in all the yeah. scenes whenever the elders were talking to you. So you got to talk to him literally every episode. Yes. And they give you all those cryptic messages that you had to figure out as you went along. Exactly. <laughs> every time you're like, I don't know what you guys are talking about, but I hope it actually makes sense by the end of the episode. <laughs> it would have been funny had the elder said, if I said, I don't know what you're talking about, why don't you go ask Lou? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been great. <laughs> I remember there was an episode where, where Les made a comment about it. Like, you know, it was like, it was kind of like a little tongue in cheek, like, you know, jab at the fact that like, this is how we do it. We, you got to figure it out on your own. And I, I, I can't remember exactly how he phrased it, but it was something of the fact of like, yeah, I guess we'll figure it out or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. You'll figure it out, Billy. Just, you know, <laughs> exactly. Patience, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I walked around with a dumb look on my face a lot. What are you talking about? <laughs> You'll figure it out, Billy. I always loved the little, the little Christmas tree on the console. You had to, there was like it was like the bat phone for the for the elders. Yes, <laughs> it, would yeah. always, it would always light up. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, Stacy's thinking of making one of those for me. My really? wife's thinking. Oh man, that'd be cool. I yeah, would love taking it. She wants to put it on a table at Comic Cons. We just put my hand over. That'd be very cool. So, did you ever? imagine that it would be as big as it was i mean i'm sure when you first started it you were like oh it's just another gig but i mean 
was there some point where you were like, man, this is like bigger than I thought it would be? Yes. And I, I really, because it was Saturday morning TV and I just come off of a primetime show, I was very surprised. One of the main elements it got was so big is because normally the demographics on the Saturday morning TV show, especially back then, were like five to 11. But because yeah. all the teen magazines were promoting me, now the, the demographics were five to 19. So we had huge ratings, huge demographics, huge following. Right. So it was getting bigger and bigger all the time. And then, of course, now with the resurgence, it's even better. Yeah. What, what was it like? If Can you walk us through a day on set for Shazam? I mean, it was filmed in the San Fernando Valley. Can you talk a little bit about what you would do, like what what your mornings were like? Yeah, well, it was... It was a long, hot day, basically. I used to get up at 4.30 in the morning because I'd be on the set at 6, and usually it was a very long drive. You said it was uh, in San Fernando Valley, sometimes up in the mountains, out the beach, even Vasquez Rocks. We were all over the place. So it would be like an hour and a half drive or whatever. So I'd get in the set at 6 o'clock, and we'd work until sometimes 6 or 7 o'clock at night. So very hot, long days, but fun days because... The crew was fantastic. The crew were so professional. Those guys did F Troop, they did Lassie, a bunch of other shows too. They had great resumes, all the guys. That's Plus, so working cool. with Les Tremaine was fantastic. Um, one day it was so hot, we were actually shooting a scene and we had all the nine lights outside the front of the windshield of the RV and the windshield cracked. So, Whoa. yeah, right in the Whoa. middle of the day, that was interesting as well. So, <laughs> crap, boom. Les and I were trying to stay in character. So, but it was a fun, it was fun. Plus, the fact I'm a, I'm a working actor. You can't be happier than that doing the show. For sure. But we had great guest stars. You know, Dana Bonaduce, sure. Butch Patrick, Jackie Earl Haley, Dabs Greer. I got to meet all these celebrities that I that I liked. You know, and so it was just a lot of fun. <laughs> I, Nuri, Nuri mentioned that it, we were talking about this before we started. Nuri mentioned that it was shot in San Fernando Valley for the most part, and I recognized, like I said, I recognized Tahunga. In, in the first episode, I think is what I said it was. Um, and it's it, so for the most part, I mean, from what you remember, it was mostly in, in the valley or did you guys venture out like, you know, maybe like San Diego or something? We were down, we did an episode down in San Pedro, uh, Topanga Canyon. Again, that's part of the valley. We did most of it was in the San Fernando Valley. Right. In Spawn Movie Ranch, which is pretty weird. That's where the Manson family that's lived so cool. for a while. We shot an episode out there and that was sort of creepy. Wow. Yeah. Bit, yeah, yeah everybody's got a Joe Spawn Ranch now because of um, the Quentin Tarantino movie that just came exactly. out. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Once upon a time in Hollywood, yeah, it's like, oh, we yeah. shot Shazam out there. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I was there and it smelled <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it did. It was funny. We, we were all walking around. We smelled something rotting. It was very weird. Don't oh. know what it was, but, you know. Oh. And that was 1969 when the murders were, and we were shooting in 74. So something was out there that smelled dead. <laughs> oh, it's not. Oh, gosh. It's crazy. Michael, by any chance, did you, during filming, did you know that Shazam is actually an anagram for the names of the immortal elders? Yes, I knew that. You did. <laughs> Solomon, so Atlas, Zeus, know, Achilles, Mercury, yeah. Yeah, so Shazam, for yeah. that don't know, Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Zeus Achilles, Achilles, and Mercury, yeah. yeah. Shazam, yep. It's funny because every time I, I would hear the beginning and I heard all the names, for some reason, my mind would trick me into thinking that they said one of the names twice. And I don't know why, like something yeah. in the way that the, that the announcer would say it. I was like, wait a second, didn't he say that name already? And then I was like, no. And then after a while, I'd be like, no, he's just spelling out Shazam. Exactly right. Yeah. So no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, obviously for, you know, we're all wearing it now. The red shirt, t-shirt is like, yeah. Uh, how many did you go through? Like, did you did you have one and you just watched it every day, or did you did they give you like a whole? We you know? probably had it was probably about a dozen of them, because like I said, it was so hot out there. Some of them got really faded out. There were a couple of episodes you could see they were orange looking instead of red, <laughs> and then I damaged some of them too doing a few stunts. So there was about twelve altogether. Wow, that's cool. Did you have? I mean, it's kind of a design based on the comics i mean it's not exact but i mean did you have any input on the design or none whatsoever just like here wear this no, they just said wear this <laughs> okay <laughs> like, All right, cool. do, you, do you i mean did you keep any of them do you still have any of the original ones just the one i'm wearing just that one <laughs> <laughs> that's the only one 
<laughs> that's the one I have. Taking it off. Yep. <laughs> and the, I, the only time I wear it is right now with you guys, or when I do comic cons. Yeah, yeah so it works. We, we, <laughs> the fans love when you do that. And I don't uh, wash it; I steam clean it, so I don't want it to shrink or fade out. Uh, it's smart. That's smart. Yeah. Really smart. We need to do the same, Chris. Note to self. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's, it's my, you know, that's why we want John Davy to wear his Captain Marvel outfit too when he is not another comic con. So. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Before we get on to John Davy, because of course we're gonna have to talk to him. He's influential to the series, but. You had mentioned Les Tremaine earlier. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship with Les Tremaine? Oh, yes. Les and I, I was in my 20s back then, my early 20s, and Les was in his 60s. We became really good friends. He was a wonderful guy, not uh, let alone a legend, but we became buddies. We used to go to each other's houses for dinner. I'd go over to spend time with he and his wife. He would come over to my house. I even took him up to visit my parents when they lived up in Northern California. My parents were, you know, Les Tremaine fans because he was a star of radio before there was television. Right. He was a wonderful guy. We used to like pull, we pulled stunts on each other and pranks all the time. We liked each other so much. He carried a big backpack all over the set. So one day I stuck a 10 pound rock in his backpack <laughs> and he kept saying, I don't know what's in this backpack. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> we drove back to his house that night, walked in the house, took a backpack off, put it on his glass coffee table and went to uh -huh. the What's in here? He opened it up, looked at it, and said, Michael, you son of a <laughs> <laughs> So he was laughing. Um, Thanks, Mike. You put that on. So we used to pull pranks on each other. One time, Les was shooting a scene, uh, and he was sitting up on a tree limb, and red ants were crawling up his leg and biting him. But he never broke character. Wow. So I loved Les. Whoa. I loved him. Yeah. He was such a oh, great guy. I remember guy. that episode. Like, all of a sudden, he was just, like, in the tree. Exactly. He just appeared in the tree. Episode. Yeah. yeah. And nobody knew it. Red ants were crawling up his pants. <laughs> oh my God. That's hilarious. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. So he was a great guy. Of, and I don't know if you know the answer to this because this always drove me kind of crazy during the show. Here's Billy, you know, riding around in this RV, like, you know, saving people from town to town and stuff. But was the, was the mentor, was he Billy's legal guardian or just did the elders like appoint him? Do you know that? Or was it just like, you were just like, oh, I'm I in. Don't know. That question is, uh, always comes up at Comic-Cons, too. Yeah. And it really was never spelled out. We really don't know. Was he my legal guardian, guardian or did they always disappoint him? Don't know for a fact. I just went along with what they did. Right. I always yeah. thought it was funny because they never they never explained also, like, his jo like Billy's job. Like, he was, you know, in TV. Right. And, and there's, there's little parts where I mean, there was like an episode where you two are arguing over what you're going to watch on TV and what yes. you wanted to watch like a movie and Les wanted to watch like baseball and, right. and you guys are arguing over it. And then you said, well, it's not on my network or something like that. That was like, right. your and so yeah. uh, I always thought it was funny because, you know, Billy in, in the comic, he wasn't old enough to be on TV. So I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting right. how they worked that in. And I thought that was a cool because you were you're definitely older for Billy than what the comic book is, and I thought that was cool how they did that. But I was thought it was interesting yeah. that you never went to work though. <laughs> <laughs> never went to work. Was I really a reporter, a TV reporter? What did I do? Yeah, I yeah. I mean, you never actually went to work, so. <laughs> nope. You never saw me working. No. <laughs> He's busy being a superhero, Chris. Come on. Yeah, that's true. That was his work. <laughs> Come on, that is work. You know, no one asks that. Tough work, yeah. His day job is. That's a lot of work. He goes for Billy Batson. <laughs> yeah. So you know, speaking of superheroes, I, I want to talk a little bit about your counterpart. You know, the great Sean Davy, who played, you know, transformed Shazam. Can you talk a little bit about working with John? I know we see him at Comic Cons. You, you, the two of you are a dynamite duo, but. Uh, I John's a great guy. We also became really good friends. And he has a good sense of humor, too, because one day Les and I pulled a prank on John. He had a brand new car I brought on the set one day, parked it. I think it was a little Fiat, I'm not sure. Parked this little red sports car. So Les and I went into the prop department, prop van, and got out a furniture rug, put it on top of his car, and put dirt and rocks and boulders all over this brand new car. So and John looked at it and... Took it well, which is good because John's an ex-Marine, ex-heavyweight prize fighter, and Captain Marvel. And we're challenging this guy. So he had a good <laughs> sense of humor, thank God. <laughs> yeah, he would have clobbered me. And he's a great guy. I liked him, and, and we remained friends over the years. And now we're doing Comic-Cons again together. And 
I like John. He's a great guy. He's got good sense of humor, and he's a lot of fun. And he, plus, the fact he was a fighter. And he the last he actually his sparring partner was Joe Frazier. What? Oh talk about God. yeah. Talk about a fighter. Yeah. Whoa, that's yeah. amazing. He messed with that guy's car. Oh, exactly. Yeah. I'm messing with his car. Really exactly. <laughs> See, I'll mess with Nuri all day, but I'm not I'm not messing with somebody that's a prize fighter. Yeah, no. It wasn't too smart on my part, but thank God John had a good sense of humor. <laughs> he's he's a good guy though. We love we love working with both of you guys. Like you you're both tremendous people. And we I mean, other than all of this nonsense, you know, we love you guys as people. Like you you're both tremendous. It's fun. Thank you very much. I like John of course. and uh, you guys. Yeah. So speaking of, we were talking about the guest stars earlier you named a couple uh danny bonaducci and uh uh jackie rohaley who's one of my favorites yeah. um and then um was it butch patrick, butch patrick uh, yeah. who was who was your favorite guest star to work with like did you have one in particular dabs greer was my favorite because talk about he's another legend this guy had done so much work in television motion pictures yeah i mean he was even in the green mile you know he played tom hanks as an old man so yeah, that's I, true. When I walked on the set that oh, there was another one too. But I walked on the set that day and saw Dabs Greer was great, but also Frank Coglin Jr. Oh yeah, the original Billy Batson made a guest appearance in one of the episodes too, and that was pretty cool. I'm doing a scene with the original Billy Batson. That was really neat. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you know him prior to that scene, or was that something that was you know impromptu? That was very impromptu. We did. We were shooting an episode at. Um, Griffith Park Zoo, the LA Zoo, Griffith Park Zoo. And there's a guy riding around in a little golf cart and someone said to somebody, that's Frank Coughlin Jr., the original Billy Batson. So the director, Arthur Nadell, didn't know that. They walked up to him, talked to him and said, wow, that's fantastic. Would you like a little part in the movie? He said, in the TV series, he said, absolutely like, I would love it. Wow. So he gave him a little bit of a part and I, I, my scene was with him. And that was really cool. What that's a coincidence. Really cool. That is so yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, that was neat. I'm trying to think of which, I can't remember which episode he was in now. Do you remember what, what the premise was? I don't remember the name of the episode, I don't, but I just know he worked at the LA County Zoo and he was driving around in a little golf cart. Ah, that's it. Yes, it was yeah. the zoo episode, right? With the condor? Yeah. Or exactly. like with the condor. Yeah. 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 The condor, I remember yeah. that one. That one was yeah. cool. Like the kid is trying to walk through the rhino cage or something, and then he's yes. up letting like a vulture out. That's it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. That's ah, that's funny. I didn't even realize that was him. Yeah, that was pretty cool. The 1940s. Wow. It was in the serial, 1940s, yeah. Wow. That is amazing. And I'm sure he woke up that morning, never had an idea he was going to be, you know, a guest star. Wow. <laughs> so just cool. episode. <laughs> Nuri? Do you do you have a favorite episode that you worked on, Michael? Yeah, I liked one called Little Boy Lost. It was a great episode. It was about a little boy who had some mental issues and he wanted a puppy and his father wouldn't let him have it. Oh, the yeah. Episode, I loved it. The kid was adorable. The puppy was adorable. It was a great script. That was that my was, favorite. Episode. Wasn't it the one where the, the puppy falls down the mine shaft and then the yes. dad goes down there? Yeah, exactly. I remember that one. Yeah. That that puppy was, I remember watching that one and I was like, man, that is, how did they find like the cutest puppy on the planet? Yeah. For this I episode? played with that puppy most of the day. I had holding that puppy, hugging it. It was adorable. Aw, yeah. yeah, that was a cool episode. So yep. uh, tell us, tell us about. We'll, we'll jump forward a little bit. Uh, so in the later episodes, they merged the uh, Secrets of ISIS, mm -hmm. or the Shazam and ISIS Hour. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, the second season they brought ISIS in and made it the Shazam ISIS Hour, and it was fun. I enjoyed the show. Unfortunately, I only got to work with Joanna Cameron ISIS. I think it was one episode, one crossover. Oh. I think John did a two or three with her, but I only got to do one. She was a nice lady, and it was a good series, too. I liked it. You know, it was a lot of fun. That's cool. Now, during the height of Shazam, you were a teen idol. Uh, you know, and what we know from, you know, living, you know, the 25 years of my life is that uh, many of the stories is the people that are in the industry that sort of deal with the fame of this deal with certain challenges of being a young actor. Um, how did you handle that? I, you know, I know I read somewhere that you couldn't leave your, con uh, your house after being on the cover of Tiger Beat. So yeah, it got, it got pretty scary. 
it wasn't just Tiger. It got, it got crazy. It even went to Europe. Bravo magazine in Germany had me on the front cover too. And they actually nominated me for the 1974 and 1975 TV Star of the Year Award for Shazam because they were watching it over there. Wow. So anywhere I went, teen magazines all over the place were running pictures of me. And it got to the point where I could not leave my place. I had a condo in West Hollywood. And it was there were security guards in the lobby because a lot of celebrities lived in this condo. Big celebrities lived in the condo. So there were times when I, I couldn't go out. And the security guards would buzz my, my, my room and say, hey, you got people out front, don't come downstairs. I look over my balcony, my balcony overlooked the driveway, I look down and see a bunch of girls hanging out by the front, by the intercom out front. There were times I did go out where I could, I went to the market and people come out and bugged me. It was part of the business too, but it was, wasn't a fun part. One time I was even invited to go to the Osmond concert at the Forum. I wanted to see the Osmonds perform. So I didn't know what was going to happen, but I'm walking down. We were like fifth row center. I'm walking down through the forum. I got about halfway down. All of a sudden I heard, there's Michael Gray. Next thing I know, I'm attacked. Girls pulling my hair, pulling my clothes. The security guards picked me up and threw me in a broom closet. So the whole <laughs> concert I spent in the broom closet playing with brooms. I never got to see the concert. Oh, so, that sucks. It was part of the business, part of what you have to pay for being a teenager. How did they get you article. out of the broom closet? I'm just curious. How do what? How did you get out of the broom closet? Security like, guards stood in front of it. When the concert was, was over, they opened the door and let me out and took me out in the parking lot and put me back in the car. Wow. <laughs> wow. So it was fun, but it wasn't fun. You know? yeah. yeah. I know how you feel. It happens to me a lot. So. Yeah, I've seen it a couple <laughs> times. People chasing you around. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, you mentioned you mentioned the the little boy with the dog, um, you know that episode. Um, did you have any like favorite moments on the show? Like other than that, obviously that you you know that you can remember that you were like, man, that was a lot of fun, or that was really cool. Well, my favorite moment on the show is the fact that I was a working actor again. That right, was my favorite moment. But. Again, just to, you know, there were some scenes we did that were so much fun, especially the scene I said with Les and I were in the motorhome and the window cracked. You know, that was probably the funniest thing right there. Another another scene we did, another thing we did, which no one knows about, was on a blooper reel. Uh, Captain Marvel yelled Shazam. And the first couple of times we did it, we had smoke. So we had a strip of, of gunpowder. So when Captain Marvel said Shazam, they lit the gunpowder, smoke would come up. And it would clear and Captain Marvel would be standing there. So one time the smoke cleared, Captain Marvel was standing there, it was Les Tremaine wearing the Captain Marvel outfit. <laughs> that was great. Nobody knows about that. Oh, that's cool. It was a lot of fun, yeah. And plus the fact that first time I did it, I almost got my eyebrows singed. So <laughs> put that out quickly. Another thing happened on the set too, which people don't realize, Billy had a motorcycle the first couple episodes. Right. And then it vanished. Well, what happened, I would take the bike out during lunchtime, just ride all around different locations. We were shooting up up in Agoura Hills one time near Paramount Ranch. And I said, I'm gonna take the bike out for a ride. So I had a little bit of lunch and riding around up in the hills up there. It was safe, I thought. Dirt roads and grass, whatever, nice area. Two guys in Harleys pulled up next to me, choppers, and one of them kicked me. So I went off the side of the road. Thank God it was a grassy hill down the side of the road messed up the bike. I didn't really get hurt. I was wearing a helmet, but I sort of rolled around, bounced around on the grass. So they took the bike away too. That's it. No more bike. So Whoa. that happened too. Whoa. Yeah, I was one that's funny. I always wondered that. Like cuz they did show you a lot on the bike. Yeah. Like in the first like yeah, first like I think it was like 6 or 7 episodes something like that. Yeah. Like another one for you too. Yeah. One day it was time for lunch. We were all in the motorhome, Les and I and John just sort of hanging out before lunch. And they said, okay, lunch break, guys. They asked one of the drivers to please put the motorhome under a tree so it stayed in the shade because it was also about 105 out there. So I said, I'll take it over there. And they said, okay, Michael, go ahead. Just be careful. So I started to drive it under a tree, under a tree limb. Uh-oh. I drove a little Firebird at the time. I didn't realize how big the RV was. So I hit the tree limb. All of a sudden, peeled back part of the roof, so daylight came through the roof of the, of the oh, RV. No. So they never let me drive that again either. No more bike. You can't drive the <laughs> RV again. So. You're losing all your privileges already. <laughs> it, 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 oh. like, like cooking mitts on you, so you couldn't go anywhere. 
That's <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. I'm glad he doesn't mentioned... drive anything anymore. Nothing. But... Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the motorhome though. Why do you think it was? Why do you think a motorhome? Uh, why do you think they pick that as the vehicle that you guys would drive around in? Good question. And it was sort of obvious too, because like, I wonder who's driving that motorhome. The big Shazam logo on the front. You know, like, <laughs> exactly. Wow. Like, like, yeah. Gee, I wonder if Captain Marvel was in there. <laughs> yeah, it was sort of subtle. <laughs> That's big a good Shazam point. logo on the front. <laughs> I never, I never realized that. Like, not only do people like not want to get Captain Marvel's autograph when they meet him, but that that RV has his logo, <laughs> and you guys are sure like, did. Oh, look, there's Captain Marvel. How nice! Yeah, yeah, it was a big logo too. About <laughs> yay big. It was pretty big size. Yeah. I want. I wanted to point out real quick. I've been kind of glancing over at the feed of people uh, commenting. I yeah. wanted to let you know that Keone Young is commenting. And he, uh, said, he said, Michael and I were at Pasadena Playhouse together. We were dorm mates. We were. That is so yeah, cool. Yeah. We really went to acting cool. school together. I said, I picked Pasadena Playhouse. Keone was one of my friends at the Playhouse. We were dorm mates together. I love Keone. I haven't seen him since then. I know he works a lot. And now because I'm with Celeb Works, and he is too, we'll I can't to wait to see Keone again. again. I'm yeah, looking forward gotta, to doing a con with him. It's we have to get a promoter to, we're going we're gonna to get that to happen. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Wu and Billy Batson together again. I wanted I went at Pasadena Playhouse, Keone was very successful. And Sally Struthers too. She went on to do all in the family. But I think Keone was probably the most successful one that graduated in our class to work. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. He's he's a phenomenal actor. He's uh, very good. He's very, he's very talented. He's talented right now. He really is. He's an incredible actor. Yeah. Very, yeah, very no, good. He's a nice guy. He really is. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So fan, fans might not know this, but you and your lovely wife, Stacy, my my uh, words with friends partner, uh, owned and ran a flower shop for many years. Can we talk about that? Sure, we did. Again, I, I wasn't working too much in the business because I was so typecast. I had a lot of trouble getting work. So we decided I got to do something to support a wife and family. So we bought a flower shop in Beverly Hills. And we ran it for quite a few years long time actually but it was overwhelming i mean i worked 365 days a year i would get up at two o'clock in the morning go down the flower market i get to the show get to get to the, the flower shop around six o'clock in the morning unload the flower the van unload the flower van and work until six or seven o'clock at night or even later it was very tough people would come in all the time and say you look very familiar do i know you from somewhere <laughs> and i didn't say i was billy batson and Shazam. i sort of kept it quiet the yeah. People Magazine picked up on it. Somehow they find out, oh, I know, LA Times did an article about me being ex-Shazam star now in a flower shop. So People Magazine picked up on it. They did a story about it. So now people were coming in to see me, to meet me, to say hello to me. Uh, it was fun. Basically, we had quite a few celebrity clients. A couple of them we became friends with, Sharon and Ozzy Osbourne. Oh. Our next door, they were next door neighbors to the flower shop. So what? we became very good friends with them. They've invited us when they got remarried. They invited us to the, the remarriage. It was a lot of fun. That's nice so people. Cool. Barry Gordy from Motown was one of our clients. Wow. Barry. And you look around every once in a while, you'd see Al Alan Alder walked in the shop one day. Jane wow. Fonda walked in the shop one day. Whoa. So amazing talent came in there. So it was a lot of fun doing it, but it got to the point where I didn't want to do it anymore. I was burned out. So we That would have been a great it. reality show. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it would have been great. And it you know been, what? Yeah. I have to mention this. I, I hope, I only hope after the LA Times article came out that you had a flower special that was red and yellow and it was called the Shazam special. That would have been brilliant. <laughs> brilliant marketing, Michael. Yeah, yeah, I should have talked to you. It would have been a good idea. We could, yeah, we could have made lots of money together. We would have yeah. made it happen. We would have made it happen. It could have, it could have been the celeb work Shazam because our logo is the same color. So. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Have it would have been a combo special all yeah. day. We can do it now. Um, put it on one of our tables at a conference. I like it. We're gonna do it. <laughs> We're gonna do it. We can we can we can make up for lost time, trust me. Okay. Uh, we have plenty of time now with the quarantine. That's right. Um, exactly, you sure do. Yeah. You, you you brought up the fact that you were typecasted and that prevented some work. But you know, the resurgence uh is pre you know, uh has shown that it's that the show is iconic, it's a success. You recently guest starred, I think, on four episodes of Archer. Yes. Uh, how did that role come about? Interesting story, actually. My son called me. He said, 
you just mentioned on Archer. He was watching an episode. Archer was lying out by the pool with Lana, and he had amnesia. So he said to Lana, what was the guy's name that starred in that show called Shazam Isis Hour? And he paused and he said, oh, Michael Gray. That was it. So my son saw it, called me up, and told me. So I contacted Adam Reed, who is the creator, executive producer, and writer for Archer. I contacted Adam Reed. Turns out he was a Shazam fan. That's why he put me in the show. We talked about it. We put, he put me in two episodes in the seventh season called Drastic Voyage, part one and two, where my character's name was TV's Michael Gray. Adam Reed it's gave me that name. I love the yeah. distinction, TV's Michael Gray. I exactly. He created that name for me. So I just did two episodes for the 10th season. One of them is actually on this coming Tuesday. It's called Robert De Niro. It's on 9 o'clock on FXX. And I play about six characters in this one. Wow. So It's phenomenal. It's a lot of fun. And I think I'll be doing more. But right now, because of the virus, they've sort of shut down. But um, TV's Michael Gray. And I told Adam that I wanted to use that name for my, my Twitter account. He said, well, you know, why not? You are TV's Michael Gray. Do whatever you want to do. So. We need a big sign when we do Comic Cons that just says TV's Michael Gray. That's, that would be perfect. Yeah, add a read nickname. That's funny. That's my new nickname. TV's Michael Gray. So speaking of Comic Cons, uh, you said no to them for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, what was your first Comic Con experience like? Like what made you change your mind that you you know well, thought you wanted to do them let me tell you why i said no to begin with back in the day when i was shooting shazam we shot shazam monday through friday friday night i would get on a plane fly to a city and do an auto show every single weekend sunday night fly back go to sleep get up monday morning and shoot another show so we did it every single week i was on the road i was getting burned out yeah so it got to the point where i don't think i want to do these anymore I, mean, I did them with Adam West, with Burt Ward, with the guys in Welcome Back, Carter, Lee Majors, Farrah Fawcett. Wow. It was pretty cool. So, but I was getting tired, and I didn't want to do, when Comic-Cons first came around, you want to do Comic-Cons? I said, no, I don't. I just, I, I wasn't interested after the auto show circuit. Right. But when Warner Brothers asked me to come down to San Diego Comic-Con 2012 to help promote the DVD, because they just bought the rights to it, you come down and do it with us? I said, sure. Our buddy Gary Marinu, I'm sure, is the one that invited you, right? Gary. Yeah, Gary. Gary Marinu, yeah. Yeah, yeah we know guys Gary. Yeah, we Gary are. invited me down. So he says, stand out in the hallway. We're doing a panel. I'm, I'm going to introduce you. Come into the panel. And we're going to surprise everybody and say, Michael Gray from Billy Batson. Michael Gray, who played Billy Batson, is here. They called my name. I came in. I walked in. There must have been six, 700 people on this panel. They all stood up. were screaming and yelling. I thought, this is amazing. So now I'm interested in doing Comic Cons again. So wow. all because of San Diego and Gary Morano. So that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Like 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 you said, 700 people are in the audience. They're screaming. They're shouting. Yeah. What do you think has made the show such a long lasting success? I mean, it's impacted so many of the fans yeah. that come to your tables lives. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the morals of the story or the moral values of the show. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. It's actually very heartwarming, to be honest with you, because the moral values of the show were very good and very warming. And every time I do a Comic-Con, every single time, dozens and dozens of people come up and tell me, your show saved my life, made me the person I am. And they tell me horrible stories. My parents abused me. My parents were alcoholics. I was bullied. I was overweight. I was picked on. Everything horrible. I mean, horrible, horrible situations. Everybody... And your show saved me. Every Saturday morning, it was my escape. I got a bowl of cereal. I sat down in front of the TV. And you were my escape. And thank you for it. It made me the person I am today. I loved it. Now I have my children watching it. In some cases, they tell me they're having their grandchildren watching it. So wow. it's amazing. It really is. And now with the resurgence again, because it's just a movie and DC Universe streaming it. And Warner Brothers putting it on Blu-ray now. It's as big as it was back in the 70s. It's actually blowing me away. Wow. I, I just wanted to, I, I also, I, it's funny, I always watch the feed. And so uh, Keone actually chimed in again. And he said that Adam from Archer was a Deadwood fan and he hired him for three shows. Yeah, I know he did, he did Archer too. I know that, yeah. That's pretty That's cool. cool. So the two yeah. of you got to do that together too. That's funny. Yeah, I'd like to do one. I want to see Archer. I got to see Keone again. 
<laughs> he's yeah, yeah, he's awesome. We'll make it happen. Yeah. So I'm tell you a quick story, real quick. Sure. Yeah, no, no. Auto show with Adam West. Yeah. Okay, we did a car show down in, in Charlotte, North Carolina, and Bert was there too, and a bunch of other celebrities. But whatever, Adam and I left at the same time, checked out of the hotel, got to the airport, and they had security checking back then too, but not like it is now. So we, they're going through our bags. So they go through Adam's bag, and they pull out a bag of cash. They looked at the bag of cash, looked at Adam, hmm, went through the bag, pulled out his Batman mask. Looked at the Batman mask, looked at the cash, looked at Adam and said, you guys want to tell me what you're doing with all this money and this cash? Like you're robbing the bank? And Adam looked at the guy and said, I'm Batman. <laughs> and the guy, yeah, sure you are. He said, no, I'm Batman. I said, no, he's Batman. <laughs> That's Adam West. Terrific. And I'm Billy Batson. Yeah, I'm Michael Gray. I'm Billy Batson. So the guy said, oh, okay, never mind. Get on the plane. <laughs> That's See, I love stories like that. Like, that's the kind of stories I want to hear. Grace, Adam West and I laughed about that. I saw him again at, at some uh, show we did at the Hollywood show or something. I don't know what it was, about 20 years later. We were sort of laughing about that again, too. That is hilarious. <laughs> um, so the new sh the new movies, uh, the new movie came out with yes. uh, Zachary Levi. And, uh, I mean, I have my own thoughts on it. I don't know. I, I actually liked it a lot. I, I hear a lot of people, you know, that liked it. Uh, did, I mean, what were your thoughts on the new movie? Well, I didn't know what to expect, honestly. So I had to go see it. And I liked it. It was very entertaining. It was not like Shazam the TV series. Right. I didn't know if it was going to be like it or not, I don't know. They did a different version of it. I liked it a lot. I actually got to meet Zach Levi and Asher Angel at the Denver Pop Culture Con. Oh, that's cool. They were about, about four tables down from me. So we got to hang out afterwards, have some pictures taken. And they were happy to meet me. I was happy to meet them. But I wanted a cameo in it. Back in, again, in 2012, at San Diego Comic-Con, I met one of the executive producers back then. I'm not going to say who he was because he's not with the show anymore. But he said to me, "There's a good." they were in pre-production. They weren't even writing it yet. He said, we're probably going to have you in a cameo. Right. Said, cool. I'd love it. It didn't happen. Uh, all the Shazam fans, too, at Comic-Con said we wanted you in the movie. We were hoping you'd be in it. That's one of the reasons we went to see it. Yeah. So that's why I saw the Hulk. I wanted to see Lou Ferrigno, and I did. Lou yeah. Had, you know, cameo. He walked across the screen in a security guard's outfit. So <laughs> right. as the next one, I don't know, but I'm hoping I get in it. I would love to be in it. Yeah, Warner we'll Brothers, listen. When, we, listen. when we signed you listen on, <laughs> when we signed yeah. you on, it was the number one question because we signed you on right when the movie was about to be released. Yeah, and everybody and wanted to know. Everybody asked, is, is Michael Gray in the movie? I, I don't know Gray how they don't do that. Like, that doesn't make yeah. sense to me, but it, it only makes hopefully sense. Hopefully they'll write it for number two. It only right. pays tribute to the past, but it also makes yeah. the fans really go crazy. I mean, that's the yeah. whole point of it. You know? Exactly. You know, yeah. John, too. I mean, you know, people always think you should be just sitting at a bus bench or something, just watching Captain Marvel fly by and say, I know that guy. Anything. Hey, anything at all. Have you guys in yeah. it? Yeah. Are you guys walking by him and, you know, giving him a weird look? It would be terrific. Oh, I got yeah, it. Exactly. I got it like an old RV pulls up and, like, almost runs into him. And yeah. stuff, and all kind of look at each other and go, and then he keeps walking by or something. Yeah. That would, that would be perfect. good. <laughs> Someone suggested, a fan suggested, you should be playing a, a cameo and you see Billy Bats and you walk up to him and say, Oh, well, there's fleet and strong and wise. If you're before my seeking eyes oh, be good. and walk away. That would be great. <laughs> when I did DC daily to promote DC streaming it, one of the guys from DC daily said he was going to talk to somebody in the theatrical department about giving me a cameo. So I doubt it, but if it does happen, I'd be so happy. I would love to do it. We, we're, we're hoping for you, Michael, and we're rooting for you. And whatever we can do to campaign it, we will. Next, um, next time I'm on the lot, because I don't know if you know this, I go on the lot all the time. I have a another job that I don't speak of, but okay. I'm on the Warner Brothers lot. If I see somebody that I know is involved in the production, I will stop them. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll like tell them, like, you need to put yeah. Michael in the next movie. <laughs> well, it's even Gary Morano, too. He was he was going to ask somebody at, at, at DC or Warner Brothers about it. I'm sure he did. He said he was going to. Yeah. And Matt, Matt Patterson is a friend of mine, works at Warner Archives. He was going to talk to somebody about it, too. But he said, you know, it's difficult to get through to them sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they they have the new, the new Black Adam movie coming up, too. So there's another yeah. with that one, too. I'm looking but, forward to that. Yeah. yeah, you get to meet the Rock. 
<laughs> Dwayne Johnson. Based yeah, the, I would love it. Yeah, he's cool. Based on the success yeah. of the movie, it's you, there's going to be numerous attempts of trying to get you a, a cameo. So that's going to be it's going to be fun. Now, what we're going to do now is go through the the comment section of you know to tell you what fans wrote. Michael mm-hmm. Gardner says, Michael, hoping to see you and John again if you make a Sacramento, California area public appearance. I caught you at the Reno Pop Culture Con. Well, hope I do it again. You know, they don't normally bring you into a Comic Con the next year or whatever because you know, right. people Some have seen you already. Off. So they put off a couple of years or something, but I might do something close. You never know. You can ask the guys at Celeb Works. We're working on it. We're working on it. As soon as we're allowed <laughs> back, we're working on it. Uh, Amy said, My parents looked everywhere for a Billy shirt uh, when my brother and I were kids, none to be found. And I turn on the computer, and now there's three in front of me. <laughs> I've got my ways. We yes. got our ways. <laughs> That's it. We got it. They're difficult to get. They really are. No Absolutely question about it. Absolutely very yeah. difficult to get. We, we had to say a magic we word. We the cups, too. So. Yeah. Cups? Yeah. We, we say a exactly. magic word to get ours. Yeah. Uh, you say holy Conroy moly or say Shazam? Oh, holy moly, yeah. <laughs> Conroy Jet says it must have been hot wearing that long sleeve shirt all day when they were filming the shows. Hopefully the RV had AC. Did the RV have AC? It did have AC, but you couldn't have it on when we were shooting the scene. Right. Oh, we God. Because it was also our dressing room. So when we have the dressing room where we're having lunch inside or whatever, the AC was on. But a lot of times we're shooting the scene, you got a sound man lying on the floor between the two seats with a microphone between Les and I going back and forth. So oh. couldn't have the AC on. It was too loud. Yeah. Oh, it would have been, that, I bet yeah. that was really hot. It was hot. 110 wow. degrees outside sometimes in the desert. It was hot. Michelle Kraft says, I love to watch Shazam back in the 70s. What happened to the camper from Shazam? You're a big fan, Michelle Kraft. P.S. Write me back as soon as you can. <laughs> Nobody seems to know. The camper just sort of vanished. Nobody knows. But again, I'd like to see it. Bring that to a Comic-Con or an auto show. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. That would be great for photo ops. They could yeah. put it right next to the, the Breaking Bad camper. They could be yeah. the two the best yeah, exactly. campers of all time. Denver Pop Culture Con had the uh, Back to the Future car there. So if, if we could find the, the oh guy, we'll bring it. <laughs> we just need somebody, yeah. to, somebody that has a camper. We just need them to, you know, to do it. I think that would be great. It would be, Yoni yeah. Young says, man, it's been over 50 years since I last saw you. Yoni. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, Keone, it's been a long time. We graduated in 19, ooh, 1968. Wow. That's when we both got out of Pasadena Playhouse. 1968. That's when I, yeah. Yeah. That's when I did uh, Room 222, 1968. Ask Michael if he ever. You know, he was in 222, too, I think, wasn't he? On 222? We're going to have to ask him. We'll have to ask him. I think he might have been. Gardner says, uh, Did you ever have a crush on Joanna Cameron? I'll answer it for you. Every man probably had a crush on Joanna. Yeah, pretty much. Well, I did, but. My biggest crush was my co-star in Little People, Shelley Fabray. Oh, yeah. Of course. And she then, was, wait, uh, I did a movie called Myra Breckenridge, a small part in it. Farrah Fawcett was in it. Oh, was, oh gosh. 1968. I'm, fair, I'm walking around like a puppy following Farrah Fawcett all over the set. <laughs> wow. Amy said, uh, Tiger Bean in 16, ah, uh, teenage dreams. <laughs> Uh, I've got probably every copy of Tiger Beat, every every published. My mother kept every single copy, so I got stacks of them all over the place. That is so cool. <laughs> Nate Ashley said Shazam has always been and will always be my favorite comic book character. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Conroy Jett. Uh, Conroy Jett says you're just like Billy Batson character in the comics. Um, I am Billy Batson in the comics. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I'm TV's Michael Gray or TV's Billy Batson. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm looking. Uh, and uh, and uh, Keone wrote, uh, yes, I was in the pilot in second episode. Yeah, I remember that. For yeah. what? Oh, for um, Archer? No, 222. Oh, 222. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to yeah. end it off with this. Uh, Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Achilles, Mercury, long live Shazam. That's right. Now, my Shazam. Friend, <laughs> do you do you want to tell people where they can find you, things to follow, anything to plug? Yeah. Well, when I do something, whenever I'm getting ready to do a show or something, I, I put it on my Facebook fan pages. It's Michael Billy Batson Gray, 
on Michael Gray Shazam. And again, uh, the last episode of Archer I did is on Tuesday night on FXX at 9 o'clock Pacific Standard Time, where I play TV's Michael Gray in a show. This one's called Robert De Niro. I've also written a book, and a friend of mine has helped me get it published. We're probably going to get it published in about four or five months. So when I do that, it'll be on my Facebook fan pages. And I did a couple of, I don't know if you guys have heard Surge of Power. Surge of Power is the first openly gay superhero. So Vincent Roth, who plays Surge of Power, created it and wrote it, cast me in, in uh, the second episode. It was called Surge of Power, Revenge of the Sequel, where I play Will E. B., like Billy Batson, and I'm a reporter. Uh -huh. So all superheroes. And I did another one called Surge of Dawn. Again, I played Willie B., a reporter. <laughs> and I was doing a third one coming up. I'm not sure when it's going to be. When, it, when, we, when the virus is over, we're going to shoot it. I think John Davies is going to be in it as well. Because Vince, be Vince asked John to be in it. And the cool thing about it, the cameos they've had in that movie have been absolutely fantastic. And I'll be doing a cameo again. Lou Ferrigno was in it. Eric Roberts. Michelle Nichols from Star Wars. Linda Blair. I think Blair. Shannon Farnan, who's another one of our clients. Yeah, was Shannon in was in it too. Yeah. So they had an amazing amount of celebrity uh, cameos in it. So it's a lot of fun. I'll be doing another one of those too. And I'm pretty sure John's in it as well. That's so it's, cool. I can't wait till the third one. Uh, Mike, we want to thank you for coming on. It's, thank you, it Mike. It's a lot to us. And, uh, you know, you've provided so much insight to the show that a lot of the, these fans really want. And thank you, guys. I hope you and your wife are doing well in the quarantine. And before we end it off, uh, Chris wants to tell the fans a couple things. So. Chris, take it away. All right. <laughs> our next show will be planned for Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific, and we want to announce our special guest for next week's program. It is our dear friend, Mr. Brock Powell, a.k.a. the Kool-Aid Man. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. See, we nice. got the red shirts on, so we're ready for it. Absolutely. You get to wear them again. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you guys for inviting me. I loved it. Thank you, everybody, for writing in and having questions. And the Batson Brothers... So yep. Thank you very much. Yep. We got to wear my comedy and Mike <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Once again, uh, this is Chris Arsaga. You can follow me at The Real Arsaga. And the words of Billy Batson Oh, elders, fleet and strong and wise, appear before my seeking eyes. And holy moly. <laughs> yeah. Holy moly. Uh, I love it. And this is the Nary Lemus. You can follow me at the real Nary Lemus on Instagram. Just leaving you with a small reminder keep your feet on the ground, always reach for the stars, and never forget to stay inspired. Night, everyone. Night, everybody. Good night, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a good evening.